Chapter 60 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio 21. Purgatory, the fifth ring, avarice and prodigality, statius the cause of the earthquake. The natural thirst, which never can be quenched, save by the water asked for by the lowly young woman of Samaria as a boon, was troubling me, while hurry spurred me on behind my leader o'er the cumbered path, and I was grieving for the just revenge. Then, lo, as Luke records for us that Christ, when risen from the burial cave, appeared before the two upon the road, a shade appeared, and came behind us as we watched the crowd, which lay around us at our feet. But we perceived him not. Hence he spoke first, and said, May God, my brethren, give you peace. We turned at once, and to this greeting Virgil replied with that which corresponds to it. We turned at once, and to this greeting Virgil replied, with that which corresponds to it. Then he began. Within the blessed assembly mayst thou be set at peace by that just court which in eternal exile bindeth me. What? he replied, as quickly on we went. If ye are shades whom God deigns not on high, who guided you so far along his stairs? My teacher then, if thou regard the marks which this one bears and which the angel draws thou'lt see that with the good he needs must reign but whereas she who spinneth night and day had not as yet drawn off for him the flax which clotho lays and packs for every one his soul which sister is to thee and me could not in climbing here come up alone because it seeth not as we hence i out of the ample throat of hell was drawn to show the way to him and i shall show it as far as e'er my school can lead him on but tell us if thou knowest why the mountain shook so just now and why all seemed to shout with one accord down to its oozy base thus by his asking he had threaded so the needle's eye of my desire, that, merely with hope, my thirst had come to be less craving. The former then began, Nothing exists which this man's sacred government can feel, that void of order is or against its wont. From every change this place up here is free, whate'er heaven's self from its own self receives can be the cause of it and nothing else for neither rain nor hail nor snow nor dew nor frost falls any higher up than lies the little stairway at the three short steps clouds neither dense or rarefied appear nor lightning flashes nor yet tamas daughter who often changes quarter in the world dry vapour goes no higher than the top of those three steps whereof i spoke to thee and on which peter's vicar hath his feet below perhaps it trembles more or less but never quakes up here because of wind concealed i know not how inside the earth it trembles here whenever any soul feels pure enough to rise or starts to climb and such a cry as this endorses it. Of purity the will alone gives proof, which, seizing on the soul, now wholly free to change its company by willing, helps it. It wills this from the first, but that desire which gainst the will God's justice turns toward pain, as it was once toward sin, allows it not and i who have five hundred years and more lain in this woe felt 
only now within me a free volition for a better sphere that's why thou didst the earthquake feel and hear the pious spirits on this mountain praise that lord who soon i pray will send them up he thus addressed us and since one in drink delights according as his thirst is great i could not say how much he did me good and my wise leader now i see the net which holds you here and how it opens why it trembles here and why ye all rejoice now who thou wast be pleased to let me know and also let thy words include for me why thou hast lain so many centuries here at that time when helped by the most high king good titus took due vengeance for the wounds from which came forth the blood by judas sold i was in great renown that spirit said up yonder with the name which longest lasts and honours most but not as yet with faith so sweet my song that though at toulousan rome drew me to herself where i deserved to have my temples crowned with myrtle wreath stateiest they call me still up there of thebes i sang of great achilles next but neath this second load i sank upon the way the seeds of my enthusiasm were the sparks which warmed me of that fire divine wherewith more than a thousand poets are inflamed i mean the aeneid which my mother was and nurse in poetry and lacking which not by a dram's weight had i stirred the scales and to have lived on earth when virgil lived to one son's period more would i consent than what i owe to issue from my ban these words turned virgil toward me with a look which silently be silent said and yet the power that wills cannot do everything for tears and laughter follow so the passion from which they each take rise that least of all do they obey the will in those most truthful i only smiled like one who winks whereat the shade kept still and looked into my eyes wherein expression is most fixed and said so mayest thou bring unto a happy end so great a toil why was it that thy face showed me just now the flushing of a smile i now am caught on one side and the other one asks for silence the other conjures me to speak i therefore sigh and by my teacher am understood be not afraid to talk the latter said to me but speak and tell him what he so eagerly desires to know i therefore said perhaps thou marvellest o ancient spirit at the smile i gave but i would have still greater wonder seize thee this spirit here who upward leads mine eyes that virgil is from whom thou didst of old deride the strength to sing of men and gods if thou hast given my smile some other cause leave it as not the true one and believe it was the words thyself didst say of him already was he stooping to embrace my teacher's feet but he said brother no for thou a shade now dost a shade behold rising he said thou now canst understand the sum of love which warmeth me toward thee since i forgot our disembodied state and act with shades as if they solid work purgatorio twenty two purgatory statius the angel of justice 
the sixth ring gluttony instances of temperance already was the angel left behind instances of temperance already was the angel left behind the angel who had toward the sixth ring turned us after erasing from my face a wound and he had said to us that those are blessed whose longing is for justice and his words with nothing further ended this with thirst hence lighter now than at the other passes i so advanced that i without fatigue was following up the spirits who were swift when virgil thus began a love that flames by virtue kindled always lights another if but its flame be outwardly revealed and therefore from the hour when juvenal who let me know thy love for me came down among us in the borderland of hell my good will hath been such toward thee that none e'er bound me more to one i had not seen these stairs will therefore now seem short to me but tell me and forgive me as a friend if too great confidence relax my reign and as a friend converse with me henceforth how was it avarice could find a place within thy breast together with such wisdom as that wherewith thou by thy zeal wast filled at first these words made statius smile a little and then he answered every word of thine is of thy love for me a precious proof things of a truth quite frequently appear which offer one false arguments for doubt because their real occasions are concealed thy question makes me sure of thy belief due maybe to the ring where i was found that i was in the last life avaricious know then that avarice was too far from me and that this lack of temperance on my part thousands of courses of the moon have punished and were it not that i corrected me when i had understood thee in thy cry indignant as it were with human nature why dost thou not o virtuous love of gold govern the appetite of mortal men i now by rolling feel the wretched jousts i then perceived that hands could ope their wings too much in spending and repented me of that as well as of my other sins how many from the grave shall hairless rise through ignorance which in life and at the last deprives them of repentance for this fault no too that any fault which of a sin is just the opposite together with it dryeth its green leaves here if therefore i to purge myself have been among the folk who avarice bewail to me it happened because of what was contrary thereto when thou didst sing them of the cruel strife between the two afflictions of jocasta said he who sang bucolic songs by that which cleo singeth with thee there the fate without which doing good is not enough had not it seems yet made thee a believer if this be so what sun or else what candles lighten thy darkness so that thou thereafter didst set thy sails behind the fisherman thou first didst send me to parnassus slopes to drink he said to him and then the first thou wast who next to god illumined me thou didst like him who when he walks by night a light behind him bears nor helps himself but maketh those that follow after see when thou didst say the age renews itself justice returns and man's primeval times as down from heaven 
a new-born race descends through thee a poet i became through thee a christian but that thou mayst better see my sketch i'll set my hand to colour it pregnant already with the true belief sowed by the eternal kingdom's messengers was every portion of the whole wide world and now thy words to which i've just referred with these new preachers harmonized so well that i became accustomed to frequent them thereat so wholly did they come to seem that when domitian persecuted them their lamentations did not lack my tears and while i still remained in yonder world i helped them and their upright mode of life caused me to treat with scorn all other sects and ere in poetry i led the greeks to see the streams of thebes baptized i was and yet through fear a secret christian only i long pretended faith in paganism this lukewarmness around the fourth ring moved me till far beyond the fourth centennial year thou therefore that didst lift the covering veil which hid from me the good whereof i speak tell me while we have still a little more to climb where are all terence is and where cecilius plautus pharaoh if thou know tell me if they are damned and in what ward both they and perseus i and many others my leader answered him are with the greeks whom more than any else the muses nurse in the first circle of the sightless prison and frequently we talk about the mount which always hath our nurses on its slopes euripides and antiphon are there with us simonides and agathon and many other greeks who once adorned their brows with laurel there of thine own folk antigone is seen deiphile agir and as sad as once ismene there too may she be seen who showed langir there is tiresias daughter thetis also and with her sisters there diadamia and now the poets both of them were silent intent again on looking round since free from climbing up and free from walls and while four handmaids of the day had dropped behind the fifth was at the sun cars pole still upward pointing its burning horn whereat my leader i think that it behooves us now to turn our right sides toward the outer edge and circle the mountain as our wont it is to do thus was our custom our instructor there and with less doubt we started on again because of that deserving soul's assent in front they went and i behind alone listening the while to what they had to say which gave me understanding for my verse but soon their pleasant talk a tree broke off which in the middle of the road we found with fruit agreeable and sweet to smell and as a fir tree tapers up from branch to branch so likewise this one tapered down in order i believe that none may claim it and on the side on which our path was closed down from the lofty cliff a limpid stream was falling and spraying upward o'er its leaves then toward the tree the two bards turned their steps and from among its leaves a voice cried out of this food there will be for you a dearth then more did mary think of honouring the marriage feast and making it complete than of her mouth which pleadeth now for you the ancient roman women were content with water for their only drink 
and Daniel thought little of his food, but wisdom gained. The primal age was beautiful as gold. With hunger it made acorns sweet to taste, and nectar every little brook with thirst. Honey and flying locusts were the food which fed the Baptist in the wilderness. Hence he is now as glorious and as great as by the gospel is revealed to you. Purgatorio, 23. Purgatory, the sixth ring, gluttony, the punishment of gluttons, Forese Donati. While I, as likewise he is wont to do, who wastes his life in hunting little birds, was piercing thus the green leaves with mine eyes. My more than father said to me, My son, come on now, for the time assigned to us should be more usefully distributed. I turned my face, and no less soon my steps, behind the sages, who so talked that walking they caused to be of no expense to me. Then lo, in tearful and in singing tones, My lips, O Lord, was heard in such a way that to delight and sorrow it gave birth. O gentle father, what is that I hear? said I. And he then, shades who, moving on, loosen perhaps, the knot of what they owe. As pilgrim travellers do, who, lost in thought, are meeting unknown people on the road, turn round to look at them, but do not stop. Even so, behind us, though more quickly moving, there came a band of souls, who, as they passed, devout and silent, gazed at us in wonder. Each was expressionless and hollow-eyed, pale in his face, and lacking so in flesh, that of his bones his skin assumed the shape. I do not think that even Harisikdon became so withered into utter skin because of fasting when he feared it most. Thinking within myself, I said, Behold the people who once lost Jerusalem, when Mary thrust her beak into her son. The sockets of their eyes seemed gemless rings, and he that Omo reads in human faces would surely there have recognized the M. Who would believe the perfume of a fruit and odour of a water could so act, and cause such craving, if he knew not how, I still was wondering what so famished them, because the reason of their being lean and of their wretched scurf was not yet clear, when, lo, a shade from deep within his head, turning his eyes toward me, looked hard, and then cried out aloud, What grace is this to me? I never should have known him by his face but that to me was in his voice revealed, which in itself his aspect had suppressed. That spark rekindled all that I had known of that disfigured countenance, and thus I recognized it as Forese's face. Ah, prithee, heed thou not the dried-up scab, he pleaded, which discolours thus my skin, nor any lack of flesh that I may have, but tell the truth about thyself, and who those two souls are who bear thee company. Refrain no longer from addressing me. I answered him, Thy face, which once as dead I mourned for, gives me now no smaller cause for weeping, that I see it so disfigured. For God's sake tell me then what strips you thus. Make me not talk and wonder too, for ill can he converse who longs for something else. A virtue from the eternal will, he said, comes down into the water and the tree we left behind, whereby I thus grow lean. 
and all these people who in tears are singing because of following unchecked love of food are here re-sanctified in thirst and hunger the pleasant odour issuing from the fruit and from the spray which are the verger spread kindles in us the wish to eat and drink and not once only is our pain renewed as on this floor we move around our pain i say though solace ought to be my word for to the tree doth that same longing lead us which once led christ in happiness to cry my god when with his blood he set us free and i to him for raise from the day when thou didst for a better life change world five years have not yet rolled away till now if power of sinning further ended in thee before the coming of that happy hour of sorrow which reweddeth us to god how is it that thou art come up here i thought that i should find thee still below down there where time restores itself by means of time whence he to me my nella with the tears which streamed from her enabled me to drink the pleasant wormwood of this pain so soon she with her pious prayers and with her sighs hath drawn me from the hillside where one waits and freed me from the other lowerings so much the dearer a delight to god is my poor widow whom i loved so much the more alone she is in doing right for far more modest in its women is the wild barbagia region of sardinia than the barbagia which i left her in oh my dear brother what wouldst have me say i have e'en now a future time in sight to which this hour will not be very old when from the pulpit shameless florence women will be prohibited to go abroad showing their bosoms with the breasts exposed what barbary women or what saracens have needed spiritual or other laws to keep them covered up when going out but if the shameless ones were sure of what a swiftly moving heaven prepares for them their mouths for howling would be open now for if my foresight here deceive me not they'll grieve ere that one's cheek grows hair who still is hushed with lullabies now brother see i pray that from me thou no longer hide thou seest that not only i but all these people gaze where thou dost veil the sun hence i to him if thou recall to mind what thou with me wast once and with thee i still grievous will our present memory be who goes before me turned me from that life the other day when that one sister round was seen by you and at the sun i pointed through the deep night hath he conducted me and from among the truly dead still clothed in this real flesh which follows in his steps then his encouragements have drawn me on as up i climbed and circled round the mount which straightens you whom cricket made the world he says that he will make me his companion till there i am where beatrice shall be up there without him must i needs remain virgil is he who tells me so at him i pointed and this other one the shade because of whom just now on every slope your realm which from itself removes him quaked purgatorio fourteen purgatory the sixth ring gluttony instances of gluttony the angel of temperance speaking slowed not our gait nor did our gait our speaking but still talking we went on apace as by a fair wind driven a ship the shades 
meanwhile, who looked like things twice dead, drew wonder through their hollowed eyes at me when they perceived that I was still alive. And I, continuing my talking, said, He, for another's sake, is going up more slowly than perhaps he else would do. But if thou know, say where Picarda is, and whether I see any here worth noting among these people who so gaze at me. My sister, who tween fair and good was most, I know not which, on high Olympus triumphs, happy already in the crown she wears. This he said first, and then, were not forbid to name each here, since by our abstinence our aspects are so greatly milked away. This Bonagiunta is, his finger showed him, the Luca Bonagiunta, while the face beyond him, more embroidered than the rest, had in his arms the holy church. Of tours he was, and now by fasting, expiates Balsena's eels and rare Venaccia wine. And many more he named me, one by one, and all, when named, seemed satisfied. Hence I, because of this, saw not a gloomy act. Using their teeth through hunger, though in vain, I saw both Ubaldino della Pila and Boniface, who pastured with his crook much folk. I, Sir Mackesi, saw, who once had time to drink less dryly at folly, yet such he was that he did not feel sated. But as one looks, and more of one man thinks than of another, so did I at him of Luca, who it seemed most wished to know me. He murmured, and I heard I know not what about Gentuca, muttered where he felt the wound of justice which consumes them so. O oh, soul, that seems so fain to speak to me, said I, so do that I may understand, and with thy words appease thyself and me. There is a woman born, he then began, nor weareth yet the veil, who, howsoe'er it be reproached, shall cause my town to please thee. With this prevision shalt thou now go on, and if by what I murmured thou wast led astray, events shall make it clear to thee. But tell me whether him I here behold, who those new rhymes produced, which thus begin, Ye ladies, who well know what loving is. And him I answered, I am one who heed when love within me breathes, and outwardly express myself as in me love dictates. O oh, brother, now I see, said he, the bar which kept this side, the sweet new style I hear, the notary, Guitoni, and myself. I clearly see that your pens closely follow in the dictator's wake, which certainly was not the case with ours, and he who further sets himself most to look between these stars perceives no other difference. Whereupon, as if content with this, he ceased to speak. As bird that spend the winter long the Nile, form in the air at times a flock, and then with greater speed fly on, and in a line advance. So likewise all the people there quicken their steps with faces turned around, since through their leanness light, and through their will. And as a man who weary is of running, lets his companions go, and only walks, until the panting of his chest has ceased. Even so, Farese let the holy flock pass on, and saying, When shall I again behold thee? 
came along behind with me. I know not, I replied, how long I'll live, but I shall not so soon return, that sooner I shall not with my will be on the shore, because the place where I was set to live stripped itself further day by day of goodness, and now to dismal ruin seems ordained. Now go, said he, for him I see who most hath blame for this behind a beast's tail dragged down to the vale where none e'er frees himself from fault the beast with every step goes faster and ever faster till it hurls him down and leaves his body in disgraceful plight those spheres have not much further to revolve he raised his eyes toward heaven ere clear to thee will that become which my words can explain no more stay now behind for in this realm so precious is our time that coming thus at even pace with thee i lose too much as at a gallop from a riding troop a horseman issues forth at times and goes to win the honour of the first encounter so he with longer strides departed from us and on the road with those two i remained who of the world such mighty marshals were when he had gone so far ahead that now mine eyes became such followers of his form as of his words my mind the heavy laden and living branches of another tree appeared before me not so far away since toward it i had only then turned round beneath it folk i saw with upraised hands who toward the foliage cried i know not what like eager children who in vain beseech while he to whom they pray replieth not but with a view to make their longing keen holds what they long for up and hides it not they then departed as if undeceived and thereupon to that great tree we came which turns away so many prayers and tears pass on without approaching higher up a tree there is which bitten was by eve and this one is an offshoot sprung from that thus said i know not who among the branches hence virgil i and statius close together advanced along the side which rises up recall he said those cursed cloud-born creatures who gorged with food and drink gainst theseus strove with double breast the hebrews too recall who at their drinking showed that they were soft whence as his fellows gideon had them not when he on midian down the hills advanced thus hugging close one margin of the ring we passed and heard of gluttonies which once were followed by distressful gains then spreading out across the lonely path more than a thousand steps had borne us on in contemplation each without a word what think ye three as thus alone ye go a voice cried suddenly whereat i started as scared and sluggish beasts are wont to do i raised my head to see who this might be and ne'er were metals in a furnace seen or glass as red and bright as one i saw who said if ye are pleased to mount above ye must in this direction turn aside this way goes he who goes in quest of peace his aspect had bereft me of my sight. I therefore turned and stepped behind my teachers, like one who guides his feet by what he hears. And as, when heralding the light of dawn, the breeze of May sheds fragrance as it stirs, all redolent of grasses and of flowers, so against my brow I felt a zephyr stroke, and well perceived the motion of the wing which made me scent ambrosian odours there blessed are they whom so much grace illumes 
I heard one saying, that the love of taste stirs not too great a longing in their breast, but always hunger only as is right. End of chapter 60Chapter 61 of Jerusalem to Revelations, a quartet of spiritual experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio 25. Purgatory, the seventh ring, lusts sensuality punished instances of chastity the hour was when ascent brooked no delay because the sun had left the noontime ring to taurus as to scorpio had the night therefore as doth a man who whatsoe'er appear to him stops not but goes his way if spurred by goading of necessity so one before the other through the gap we entered in and took the flight of stairs which by its narrowness parts those who climb and like the little stalk which lifts its wings because it longs to fly but ventures not to leave its nest and lets them droop again even such was i with kindled and with quenched desire to ask, when coming to the act of one who starts to speak. Nor, though our pace was fast, did my dear father check himself, but said to me, Discharge the bow of speech, which to the arrow-head thou now hast drawn. With confidence I opened then my mouth, and said, how can one possibly grow lean when need of nourishment doth not obtain shouldst thou recall he said how when the brand was burning meleager was consumed this would not be so difficult for thee and shouldst thou think how at your quivering your image quivers in the looking-glass that which seems hard to thee would easy seem but that thou ease thee to thy heart's content lo here is statius him i call and beg that he be now a healer of thy wounds if i unfold for him the eternal view when in thy presence statius then replied be my excuse that I cannot refuse thee. He then began, If, some, thy mind shall hear and understand my words, they'll prove a light for thee unto the how which thou dost ask. The perfect blood, which by the thirsty veins is never drunk, but stays as doth the food which from the table thou dost take away, gets in the heart a power informative for all the human members being that which floweth through the veins to form the same when redigested it flows down to parts whereof more seemly silence is than speech then on another's blood it trickles thence into the natural vessel there both meet passive the one the other active sends perfect the place from which it was distilled joining the former it begins to work coagulating first then quickening that which it had formed as matter for itself the active virtue now become a soul as of a plant though so far differing from it that this is on its way and that arrived so worketh next 
that now it moves and feels like fungi of the sea then undertakes to organize the powers whose germ it is that virtue sun now spreads and now extends which from the generator's heart derives where nature on all members is intent but how from animal it comes to be a child thou seest not yet a point so hard it led a wiser man than thou so far astray that in his teaching from the soul he parted the potential intellect because he saw no organ it assumed open thy mind unto the coming truth and know that when the brain's organization is in the foetus to perfection brought the primal mover glad of such a work of nature turns toward it and breathes therein a spirit new and full of powers which draws into its substance what it active finds therein and so becomes a single soul which lives and feels and on itself reflects and that the less thou wonder at my words consider how to wine the sun's heat turns when joined to juices flowing from the vine when lachesis hath no more thread the soul frees itself from the flesh and bears away potentially the human and divine mute one and all the other faculties with memory intelligence and will far keener in their action than before then without stopping of itself it falls in wondrous way to one or other shore here first it learns its road as soon as place has circumscribed it there the forming virtue rays round it in the same degree and way as when the members were alive as when the members were alive it did and as the air when fully charged with rain is by another's rays which it reflects within itself adorned with many hues so here the neighbouring air takes on the shape the soul which settled there impresses on it as would a seal by its own forming power and afterward as doth the little flame which follows fire where'er it changes place so the new shape accompanies its spirit which since it hence takes visibility is called a shade and therewith organizes each of the senses up to that of sight by means of this we speak by means of this we laugh and by this means we make the tears and sighs thou mayest have heard upon the mount as our desires and other passions move us our shade takes shape accordingly and this the reason is of what thou wonderest at we now had reached the final circling place and to the right hand having turned our steps intent we were upon another care the bank here outwardly shoots forth a flame while upward from the ledge below a blast is breathed which drives it back and keeps it up hence one by one along the open side we had to walk while i on one hand feared the fire and on the other falling down my leader said to me along this path a tight rein must be kept upon one's eyes for one might very easily go wrong o oh, god of highest clemency i then heard sung within the bosom of the fire whose glowing no less made me wish to turn and spirits moving through the flame i saw hence at their steps i looked and at mine own lending my eyes to each from time to time 
after the lines with which that hymn concludes aloud they shouted i know not a man then in low tones began the hymn again they cried again this ended to the woods diana kept and then strove helike for having known the taste of venus poison then they resumed the song and then proclaimed the names of wives and husbands who were chaste as virtue and the marriage state enjoin and this course i believe suffices them for all the period during which the fire is burning them and such the care and diet wherewith the wound is finally sewed up purgatorio twenty six purgatory the seventh ring lust instances of natural and of unnatural lust while thus one for the other long the edge we went and my good teacher often said attention pay and let my warning help thee the sun which with its rays was changing now from asia or the western skies to white was on my right side striking me and i was with my shadow giving to the flame a brighter red i noticed many shades give heed to this small sign as on they moved this was what started them to speak of me and they began to say among themselves that one seems not to have an unreal body then some of them as far as possible too near to me though always with due care not to come out where they would not be burned o oh, thou that goest on behind the rest though not from sloth but from respect perhaps reply to me who burn with thirst and fire nor is by me alone thine answer needed for all these here have greater thirst therefore than indians or ethiopians for cold water inform us how it is that with thyself thou makest thus a wall against the sun as if thou hadst not entered death's snare yet thus one of them addressed me and at once had i declared myself had i not heeded another novelty which then appeared for through the middle of the flaming road folk with their faces turned the other way came on and made me stop to gaze at them there all the shades on every side i see make haste and without stopping kiss each other with this short form of greeting satisfied thus one ant from among its dark host touches its muzzle to another's to obtain perhaps directions as to path or fortune as soon as they leave off their friendly greeting and ere the first step has been taken there each struggles to outcry the other shade the newcome band shouts sodom and gomorrah the other in the cow pasiphae reclines that to her lust the bull may run thereat like cranes if some of them should fly toward the Ripaean heights and toward the sands the rest these shunning ice and those the sun one band departs the other comes along and weeping to their previous song they turn and to the cry which best befitteth them then those same shades who had entreated me drew near to me as they had done before with eagerness to listen in their looks and i who twice had seen what they desired began o oh, souls who now are sure of having whenever it may be a state of peace my body's members 
have not stayed beyond either unripe or ripe but with their blood and with their joints are really with me here i hence go up to be no longer blind on high a lady wins us grace whereby i carry through your world my mortal path but so may your best wish be soon fulfilled in order that that heaven may shelter you which full of love is amplest in its spread tell me that i may rule more paper for it both who ye are and what is yonder crowd which onward goes its way behind your backs a mountaineer becomes not otherwise confused nor looking round grows dumb when rough and wild he enters first a town than each shade did in its appearance there but when set free from that astonishment which soon diminishes in high-born hearts the one who questioned me before resumed happy art thou that shippest thus experience of these our bounds that better thou mayst live the people who come not along with us in that offended for which caesar once when triumphing heard queen cried out against him from us they therefore separate with cries of sodom and by self-reproach assist as thou hast heard the burning by their shame our sin was intersexual but since we by following our appetites like beasts failed to conform ourselves to human law to our confusion when we leave the others her name we cry who bestialized herself by lying in the beast resembling frame thou knowest now our deed and what our guilt if who we are thou'dst know perhaps by name there is no time to tell nor could i do it as to myself i'll rid thee of thy wish i'm guido guinizelli and purge me now because of grieving well before the end as in lysurgus anguish those two sons became when they again beheld their mother even such did i though i went not so far when him i heard self-named who father was to me and others better men than i who e'er made sweet and graceful rhymes of love hence lost in thought nor hearing aught or speaking i moved and long i gazed at him in wonder but for the fire no nearer drew to him when i with looking had been fully fed i put myself entirely at his service with those assurances which win belief and he thou leavest in me a memory from what i hear so great and plain that lethe can neither wipe it out nor make it dim but if thy words swore what was true just now tell me why hast thou by thy speech and looks revealed to me that thou dost hold me dear and i to him twas those sweet rhymes of yours which while the modern form of speech endures will e'er endear me to their very ink brother he said he whom i indicate he pointed at a spirit on a head was of his mother tongue a better smith in love songs and in stories of romance he vanquished all hence let those fools talk on who think the limousine excelleth him to rumour rather than to truth they turn their faces forming their opinions thus ere art or reason have by them been heeded thus with guittone many ancients did giving from cry to cry to him alone the prize until with most the truth prevailed 
if now so amply privileged thou art that lawful is thy going to the cloister where christ is abbot of the brotherhood a pater nostra say to him for me or all of it that we in this world need wherein no longer it is ours to sin and then perhaps to yield his place to one near by him there he vanished through the fire as to the bottom would a fish through water toward him who had been pointed out i moved a little way and said that my desire was for his name a gracious place preparing your courteous question he unurged began delighteth me so much that i cannot nor do i wish to hide myself from you ah no am i who going weep and sing with sorrow my past folly i behold and see with joy the hope for coming day now by the power which guides you to the top of this short flight of stairs i beg of you be mindful in due time of this my pain then in the fire refining them he hid purgatorio twenty seven purgatory the seventh ring lust the angel of purity dante's third dream virgil's last words as when he sends his earliest quivering beams where his creator shed his blood while ebro neath lofty libra falls and ganges waves are being scalded by the heat of noon so stood the sun daylight was hence departing when god's glad messenger appeared to us outside the flames upon the bank he stood and in a voice far clearer than his ours was singing blessed are the pure in heart no further may ye go ye holy souls until the fire have burned you enter it and be not deaf unto the song beyond he told us next when we were near to him hence i on hearing him became like one who in the grave is laid clasping my hands together over them i bowed and watched the fire while vivid images i formed of human bodies i had once seen burned toward me my kindly escorts turned around and virgil said to me there may my son be pain here but not death recall to mind recall to mind if even on garion's back i safely led thee what shall i do now that nearer god i am assuredly believe that if within the centre of this flame thou shouldst for even a thousand years remain it could not make thee lose a single hair and if perchance thou think that i deceive thee draw near to it and make thyself believe with thine own hands upon thy garment's hem lay now aside lay now aside all fear turn round toward me and come ahead assured and yet though against my conscience i moved not on seeing me still motionless and firm somewhat disturbed he said now see my son this wall remains tween beatrice and thee as pyramus when dying at the name of thisbe oped his eyes and looked at her what time the mulberry became vermilion even so my stubbornness becoming weak i turned to my wiser leader when i heard the name that ever wells up in my heart thereat he shook his head and said what's this do we on this side wish to stay then smiled 
as one does at a child in apple winds. Then, entering the fire in front of me, Statius he begged to come behind, who erst had over a long road divided us. When once inside, I would have thrown myself that I might cool me into boiling glass, so without measure was the burning there. My tender father, to encourage me, talked as we moved of Beatrice alone, and said, I seem to see her eyes already. A voice that sang upon the further side was guiding us, and we on it alone intent came forth to where the ascent began. Ye blessed of my father, come, was said within a light there, such that I thereby was overcome, and could not look at it. The sun is setting, and the evening comes, it added, tarry not but hasten on, while yet the western sky has not grown dark. Straight upward went the pathway through the rock in such direction that in front of me I cut the low sun's rays. Not many stairs had we yet tried when I and my wise leaders were, by my shadows vanishing aware, that back of us the sun had gone to rest and ere in all of its unmeasured range the horizon had assumed one single tone and night had everywhere diffused itself each of a step had made himself a bed because the nature of the mount deprived us rather of power to climb than of desire like goats which swift of foot and wanton once when on the mountain heights air being fed grow tamely quiet when they ruminate all silent in the shade while yet the sun is hot and guarded by a herd who leans upon his staff and serves them as he leans and like the shepherd in the open living who calmly spends the night beside his flock and keepeth watch lest some wild animal should scatter it even such all three of us were then i like a goat and they like shepherds by the high rock hemmed in on either side but little of the outer world could there be seen but through that little i perceived the stars more bright and larger than their wont while i was ruminating thus and thus was gazing at them sleep o'ertook me sleep which oft receiveth news of future things before they are at that same hour methinks when cytherea who it seems e'er burns with fires of love beamed first upon the mount from out the east dreaming I seem to see a lady, young and fair, who, gathering flowers, was walking through a field, and as she sang, said, Know who asks my name that I am Leah, and that I move my lovely hands about to make myself a wreath, to please myself when, at my mirror, I adorn me here, but never doth my sister Rachel leave her looking-glass but sits there all day long. Her pleasure is to see her lovely eyes, as mine is to adorn me with my hands. Seeing contenteth her, and doing me. And now, before the splendid beams of dawn, which rise with greater thanks from travellers, as coming home they lodge less far away, the shades of night were fleeing everywhere, and with them sleep. Hence I arose, and saw that my great teachers had already risen. That pleasant fruit, which on so many boughs the care of men 
is ever looking for shall give thine every hunger peace to-day these were the very words which virgil used when turned toward me and never were there gifts which in their sweetness could have equalled these such longing upon longing overcame me to be above that at each step thereafter i felt my pinions growing for the flight when all the stairway had beneath us passed and we were standing on its topmost step on me then virgil fixed his eyes and said the temporal and the eternal fire my son thou now hast seen and to a place art come where i can of myself no further see i brought thee here by genius and by art henceforth as leader thine own pleasure take forth art thou from both steep and narrow paths behold the sun that shining on thy brow behold the tender grass the flowers and shrubs which here the soil yields of itself alone until in happiness those lovely eyes appear which weeping made me come to thee thou mayest be seated or among them walk from me expect no further word or sign free right and sound is thine own will and wrong were not to act according to its hest hence o'er thyself i crown and mitre thee end of chapter sixty one Chapter sixty two of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio twenty eight Terrestrial Paradise The Divine Forest Matilda the river lethe keen now to look within and round about the wood divine whose foliage dense and green was tempering for mine eyes the new day's light waiting no longer there i left the edge and entered very slowly on the plain across a soil which everywhere breathed fragrance a pleasant breeze unvaried in itself smote me upon the forehead with a stroke no greater than a gently blowing wind whereby the branches trembling readily were all of them in that direction swaying where first the holy mounted shadow casts yet ne'er deflecting from their upright state so much that on their tops the little bird should give up practising their every art but singing with full gladness they received the earliest breezes among the leaves which sang in undertone a burden to their songs like that which gathers strength from bough to bough throughout the grove of pines on chiasis shore when aeolus has set sirocco free my slow steps now had carried me so far inside the ancient wood that i no longer could see whence i had entered it then lo a stream deprived me of advancing further which with its little waves was toward the left bending the grass which sprang upon its bank all waters which are purest here on earth would seem to have within themselves some mixture if they should be compared to that one there which hideth naught though very darkly flowing neath the perpetual shade which ne'er allows the rays of sun or moon to shine on it i checked my feet and with mine eyes passed on beyond the little stream to gaze upon the great variety of flowering trees and there as when aught suddenly appears 
that turns through wonder every thought aside a lady all alone appeared to me who singing went her way and picking flowers wherewith her path on every side was painted prithee fair lady thou that in love's beams art warming thee if outward looks i trust which used to be a witness to the heart let it thy pleasure be said i to her to draw thee forward toward this stream so far that i may understand what thou art singing thou makest me recall both where and what proserpina was at the time when her her mother lost and she the flowers of spring as turns around a lady who while dancing her feet together keeps and on the ground and hardly sets one foot before the other so on the little red and yellow flowers turned she toward me no otherwise than would a virgin lowering her modest eyes and satisfied my prayers for near to me she drew in such a way that her sweet tones reached me with all of their significance as soon as she was where the grass is bathed by that fair river's wavelets she conferred on me the gift of raising up her eyes nor do i think so bright a light shone forth from under venus eyelids when transfixed wholly against his custom by her son as smiling on the other bank she stood her hands kept picking other bright-hued flowers which without seed the highland there brings forth the river kept her still three steps apart but even the hellespont where xerxes crossed it a bridal still to every human pride endured no greater hatred from the ander because it surged between sestos and abydos than this from me because it then oped not newcomers are ye she began and hence because i smile in this place which was chosen for human nature as its nest some doubt perhaps still keeps you wondering here and yet the psalm called delectasti gives you light which from your minds can drive away your mess and thou that art in front and didst entreat me say whether thou wouldst hear aught else for i came ready for thine every question's need the water and the music of the wood said i impugn in me a recent faith in what i heard which contradicted this when she i'll tell thee how from its own cause proceedeth that which makes thee wonder now and clear the mist obstructing thee the good supreme which only by itself is pleased made man both good and apt to good and gave him this place as earnest of eternal peace through his own fault he but a little while stayed here through his own fault for tears and toil exchanged the honest laughter and sweet play in order that the trouble which below the earth's and water's exhalations caused by their own trend which is to follow heat as best they may should wage no war on man this mountain rose up toward the sky thus far and free from them it is from where it's locked and now since all the atmosphere revolves and circles with the sphere of primal motion unless its whirling ground be somewhere broken such motion strikes against this eminence which in the living air is wholly free and makes the forest which is dense resound and so much power hath the stricken plant that with its virtue it imbues the air which by revolving scatters it about 
the other land as able of itself or through its climate next conceives and bears the diverse qualities of diverse trees if this were heard it would not seem to be a wonder yonder when a plant takes root without there being evidence of seed and thou must know that all this holy plain where thou art now is full of every seed and fraught with fruit which yonder is not picked the water thou beholdest wells not up from fountains fed by mists condensed by cold as doth a stream which gains and loses breath but issues from a sure and constant fount which by the will of god regains as much as open on both sides it poureth forth on this side with a virtue it descends which takes from men all memory of sin on the other it restoreth that of all good deeds on this side it is lethe called on the other unoe and worketh not till tasted both on this side and on that this greater is than are all other savours and though thy thirst might be completely sated should i reveal no more to thee i'll give thee a corollary as a further grace nor do i think my words will be less dear to thee should they extend beyond my promise those who in ancient times sang of the age of gold and of its happy state perchance dreamed on parnassus of this very place here was the root of mankind innocent springs flowers and every fruit are always here the nectar this whereof all poets speak thereat i turned around and having faced my poets i perceived that they had heard this last interpretation with a smile then toward the lady beautiful i turned my face purgatorio twenty nine terrestrial paradise the river lethe the mystic pageant of the church singing as an enamoured lady would when once her words were ended she went on blessed are they whose sins are covered up and like the nymphs who used to go alone through woodland shades desiring one to see the other to avoid the sun she then moved counter to the stream's course going up along its bank and i at even pace matching her little steps with steps as small her paces were with mine not yet a hundred when both the margins equally were bent in such a way that toward the east i faced nor had we yet as far again moved on when round toward me the lady wholly turned and said my brother look and listen now and lo so bright a lustre suddenly traversed the mighty wood in all directions that i of lightning was compelled to think but since this ceases as it comes while that the longer it endured the brighter grew within me i kept saying what is this and through the illumined air was running now a gentle melody hence righteous zeal made me reproach the hardihood of eve who while both earth and heaven obedient were the only woman and but just created could not endure to stay beneath a veil neath which if she had but devoutly kept i should have tasted those unspeakable delights before and for a longer time while i mid such first fruits of bliss eternal was going all enwrapped and eager still for further joys in front of us the air neath the green boughs became a blazing fire and that sweet sound was now known as a song o oh, virgin sacrosanct if i have ever been hungry cold 
are sleepless for your sake good reasons spur my claiming a reward for me now helicon must pour her streams and with her choir urania give me help to set in verse things difficult to think a little further on the lengthy space still intervening between ourselves and them showed falsely what appeared seven trees of gold but when i drawn so near to them that now the common object which deceiveth sense because of distance lost no attribute the virtue which prepares discourse for reason perceived that they were candlesticks and heard hosanna in the voices of the song above the fair array flamed far more brightly than in unclouded skies the midnight moon when at the middle of our monthly course filled with astonishment i turned around to my good virgil and he answered me with looks no less with wonder fraught i then gazed back again at those exalted things which toward us moved so slowly that at run they would have been by newly wedded brides the lady chided me why dost thou gaze so ardently at those bright lights alone and dost not look at that which follows them i then saw people who were coming on as if behind their leaders clothed in white and never was such whiteness here on earth the water was resplendent on my left and like a mirror if i looked in it reflected back my body's left to me when i was on my bank so placed that now only the river kept me at a distance i checked my steps that i might better see and i beheld the little flames advance leaving the air behind them bright with colour and looked like strokes a painter's brush had drawn so that above the air remained marked out by seven long bands all in the hues wherewith the sun his bow and delia makes her belt these standards further to the rear extended than i could see as far as i could judge the outermost ten paces were apart then now were coming neath as fair a sky as i describe here four and twenty elders two at a time and crowned with fleur-de-lis and all of them were saying blessed be thou mung adam's daughter's eye and blessed be throughout eternity thy beauteous charms after the flowers and other tender blooms in front of me upon the other bank had been set free from that elected folk as in the sky star follows after star so after these four living creatures came each with a wreath of verdant foliage crowned and each of them was feathered with six wings their feathers full of eyes and these were such as were they living argus eyes would be i'll waste no more rhymes reader to describe their forms for other spending so constrains me that i in this one cannot be profuse but read thou in ezekiel who depicts them as from the sky's cold parts he saw them move accompanied by wind and clouds and fire and such as in his pages thou wilt find them such were they here except that as to wings john is with me and disagrees with him the space extending between the four contained a triumph chariot moving on two wheels which came along drawn by a griffin's neck both of his wings the latter stretched on high between the mid banner and the three and three so that by cleaving it he injured none so high they rose that they were lost to sight his members were of gold as far as bird he was and white the others mixed with red not only rome now with so fair a car 
made africanus or augustus glad but even the sons were poor compared with this the sons which when it lost its way was burned in answer to the suppliant earth's request when jupiter inscrutably was just at its right wheel three ladies in a ring came dancing on the first so red that hardly would she be noticed if in fire she were and such the second was as if her flesh and very bones were made of emerald the third one looked like newly fallen snow and now led by the white one they appeared now by the red and from the latter's song the others took their time both slow and fast upon the left hand four in purple clothed were making glad according to the gait of one of them with three eyes in her head behind the whole group i have here described two old men i beheld unlike in clothes but like in mien both dignified and grave one showed himself a pupil of that great hippocrates whom for the animals she loves most dearly nature made the other revealed the opposite intention with a sword so glittering and sharp that though i stood on this side of the stream it caused me fear then four i saw who were of humble mien and back of all an aged keen-faced man advancing by himself and lost in sleep these seven were robed in garments which resembled those of the primal company though on their heads they wore not lily garlands but were crowned with roses and with other crimson flowers a distant sight of them had made one swear that all on fire they were above their brows and when the chariot was abreast of me thunder was heard whereat those worthy people appeared to have advance forbidden them and stopped there with the standards in their van purgatorio thirty terrestrial paradise lethe appearance of beatrice disappearance of virgil when the septentrion of the highest heaven which never either setting new or rising or veil of other mist than that of guilt and which was causing every creature there to know his duty as the lower one makes him who turns the helm to reach a port stopped suddenly the people of the truth who first had come between it and the griffin turned around toward the car as toward their peace and one of them as though from heaven sent down sang thrice aloud come thou from lebanon my spouse and all the rest sang after him as at the last trump call each of the blessed will quickly rise from out his tomb and sing the hallelujah with a voice regained even so there rose upon the car divine at such an elder's voice a hundred servants and message-bearers of eternal life they all were saying blessed be thou that comer and strewing flowers on high and all around oh scatter forth your lilies with full hands i've seen ere now when day began to dawn the eastern skies all rosy and the rest adorned with beauty and serenity and then the sun rise with its face o'ershadowed in such a way that through the tempering of mists the human eye could long endure it so likewise standing in a cloud of flowers which rose from angel hands and fell again within and out the car a lady crowned with a wreath of olives or a pure white veil appeared before me neath a cloak of green clothed with the colour of a living flame my spirit hereupon which for so long a time 
had not been trembling in her presence or felt itself all broken down with awe with no more knowledge of her by mine eyes but through a hidden virtue issuing from her felt the great power of the olden love as soon as that high virtue smote my sight which formerly had pierced me through and through ere i had passed beyond my boyhood's years round to the left i turned me with the trust wherewith an infant to its mother runs whenever terrified or in distress to say to virgil thus now than a tram of blood remains in me that is not trembling i feel the tokens of the olden flame but virgil now had left us of himself deprived virgil my dearest father virgil to whom for my salvation i had given me nor yet did all our ancient mother lost avail to keep my cheeks though cleansed with dew from turning dark again because of tears dante though virgil leap weep thou not yet weep thou not yet for thou wilt need to weep by reason of another sword than this even as an admiral who both on stern and prow comes to behold the men that serve on the other ships and urge them to do well so likewise on the left side of the car when i had turned around me at the sound of mine own name which here must needs be mentioned i saw the lady who had first appeared concealed beneath the angel's festival direct her eyes toward me across the stream although the veil which from her head hung down encircled by minerva's olive leaves did not allow her to appear distinctly she went on royally still stern in mien as one doth who when speaking holdeth back his warmest words look at us well for we indeed are we indeed are beatrice how wast thou able to approach the mountain didst thou not know that man is happy here my lowered eyes fell on the limpid stream but when i saw myself reflected there i drew them to the grass so great the shame that weighed my forehead down as to a child a mother seems severe so she to me for bitter tastes the savour of harsh pity silent she kept then suddenly the angels chanted in thee lord have i set my trust but further than my feet they did not go even as the snow among the living beams grown on the back of italy is frozen when blown and hardened by slavonian winds and then when melting trickles through itself if but the land that loses shadows breed and thus seems like a fire that melts a candle even so was i with neither tears nor sighs before the song of those who ever tune their notes to music of eternal spheres but when i heard in their sweet harmonies the sympathy they had for me far more than had they said why lady shame him so the ice bound tightly round my heart was turned to breath and water and through mouth and eyes issued with anguish from my inmost breast then she still standing motionless upon the same side of the car addressed those sympathetic creatures with these words ye keep your watches through the eternal day so that nor night nor slumber robs from you one step the world may take upon its costs my answer hence is made with greater care that he who yonder weeps may understand and guilt and sorrow of one measure be not only through the work of those great spheres which to some end directly guide each seed according as the stars are its companions but through the bounty of the grace divine which for its reign hath cloud so very high our eyes cannot approach them this one here was such potentially in early life that all right dispositions would have had wondrous results in him but all the more malign and savage doth a soil become when sown with evil seed and left untilled the better and more vigorous it is 
I for a while sustained him with my face, and showing him my youthful eyes, I led him along with me turned in the right direction. But when the threshold of my second age I reached, and changed my life, he took himself away from me, and gave him to another. And when from flesh to spirit I had risen, and beauty and virtue had increased in me, less dear and pleasing was I then to him. And o'er an untrue path he turned his steps, following deceitful images of good, which nought that they have promised pay in full. Nor yet did it avail me to obtain the inspirations wherewith both in dreams and otherwise I called him back. He cared so little for them. So low down he fell, that short were now all means for his salvation, save showing him the people that are lost. I visited the gateway of the dead for this, and unto him who guided him up hither, fraught with tears, my prayers were born. God's high fate-ordered will would broken be, if Lethe should be passed and should such food be tasted without paying first the scot of penitence made manifest by tears end of chapter sixty two